Hello my friends and Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we're going to start over here in Russia where hundreds of birds have fallen from the sky and most of them were dead when they hit the ground or they were dying. So a, a very odd die-off and the biologists suggest that the weird spring weather, much colder than usual, may be responsible. And you can see the dead birds all along the roadway there. Most probably linked to abnormally cold temperatures in the Urals region, hundreds of swifts fell from the sky from hunger, exhaustion, and cold, covering parts of a highway. The whole flock of birds died because of not having time to fly to a more favorable area for food and heat. And uh, this is not the first mass die-off we've seen of birds. Actually, we've seen them in several different areas and uh, it is definitely tragic. And some of the areas that we've seen this in is Mexico, which you would not think it's the cold in that case. Italy, same thing. Canada, India, and the US. So it's not always going to be the cold weather and lack of food. There's something else going on here. And, you know, some have suggested maybe it's the UV. Uh, you know, how are they getting affected by the UV? or some other sort of phenomenon going on in this electric universe of ours with everything really going through major, major changes right now. And it's so hot in Mexico, in fact, right now that the traffic lights are literally melting. And again, is it really the heat or is there something else going on here? Is it, is it really perhaps more of the actual rays, not just the heat, because it is hot for sure. Mexico City beat a 99-year-old temperature record in an unprecedented heat wave that has already killed 13 people. Some call it the heat wave of the century, and Mexicans are being fried from temperatures reading up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It's so hot in Mexico right now that even traffic lights are melting. And a 99-year-old temperature record was beaten two days ago in Mexico City. 13 people have been killed by this unprecedented heat wave in different states across the country. In addition to the heat, meteorologists forecast intense storms in certain areas of the country. And uh, in Chihuahua, Nuevo León, and Coahuila, wind gusts could exceed 50 kilometers per hour. And it says here it's hell on earth. Definitely, definitely... Um, unusual weather but everything is unusual now and here you can look at these pictures look at how melted this is that's pretty wild so it's been going on since the end of may could continue longer actually i mean the summer's just starting and today temperatures higher than 113 degrees were recorded and reported in nine states and the other thing down there is obviously, you know, you get closer to the equator, you're getting more UV as well. And, and we're seeing UVC on the ground in multiple locations. And uh, if you follow Mr. MBB333, he was showing yesterday, they were getting unheard of readings in places like the Netherlands and in British Columbia, getting readings that you would expect to see right at the equator on a bad day. So this is really wild, and, and you're going to see that. One of the things that Ben from Suspicious Observers was talking about, and one of the reasons why he chose to live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is that it's kind of a sweet zone. So you have tremendous UV uh, exposure, and it's going to increase along the equator, but you also are going to have areas in the polar regions that are going to be uh, issues as well. So you're going to have very few sweet spots uh, where the UV might be more manageable. And again, perhaps this is why people went underground so often in the past to escape things like this. So you can see these temperatures from 113 to 122 Fahrenheit all over Mexico and look at these signs just melted wavy frying can you imagine what that could do to animals and, and humans very very 
interesting times that we're in and, and we're going to have to adapt and we're going to have to adjust. And so we have uh, Tropical Storm Aletta becoming the first named storm of the 2018 Eastern Pacific hurricane season. And the second storm is likely to form this weekend. And that, that's what I was showing the other day over there in the Pacific. Although they really are going to probably stay off land and not really affect anything too much besides uh, strong rip currents and waves. Now, overnight, things got much worse in Hawaii. <laughs> Hundreds more homes were destroyed just overnight as lava covers most of Kapoho in Hawaii. And uh, this has gotten, um, you know, this has really gotten much worse in the past uh, 24 hours or so. Nearly 200 homes were destroyed by lava in the past 48 hours, bringing the total number to nearly 300. So, you know, it's, it's pretty much tripled in just two days, the amount of homes uh, being destroyed. It's safe to say that hundreds of homes were lost. Janet Snyder, a spokeswoman for Hawaii County, said Tuesday, June 5th, referring to events that happened overnight Tuesday in the Kapoho Beach lots and vacation land neighborhoods. Vacation land is almost completely destroyed. Tuesday morning, overflights confirmed that lava completely filled Kapoho Bay. And that's what scientists with the USGS said. And that's what we were talking about yesterday when I was uh, telling you it was filling it up mostly and it looked like the bay was going to be no more. So the bay is basically filled now. And lava is extending 1.1 kilometers from the former coastline. To the south, lava is entering the water at vacation land tide pools, having inundated most of the subdivision. To the north, lava has covered all but the northern part of Kapoho Beach lots. And so, you know, this, this is completely rebuilding the lower part of the island there. And, and it's actually extending the island out. So, you know, there is an all new land being built here. But it's destroying everything in its path. So all those people, you know, that have all their belongings in this area, their whole life built around this area, they're, they're just being completely uprooted. And as always, our prayers and best wishes go to them. To the north, you know, lava has, has just covered that whole area there. And the northernmost lobe of Fisher 8 flow in the Noni Farms Road area advanced downslope about 200 yards overnight. So it's moving faster, spreading out. And here you can see a map of what's going on with the flow expansion. And uh, also be aware that like this area over in here, I was uh, watching Mr. Marzo on his Facebook channel. And this is building to a high level uh, as far as depth. And so they were talking about the potential for at a certain point, this all of a sudden to just flood on down and, uh, you know, create a new line as well going off in, in a more, uh, northwesterly area. So we'll have to see if that happens. And, uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, increasing. This is not slowing down at all. More and more houses are getting decimated. More and more neighborhoods are getting decimated. And, um, you know, we, we have a long way to go with this event, for sure. And it, it's, it's, something, it's something that's becoming rapidly unprecedented as we watch it. And so there's been many eruptions over the years, you know, in Hawaii, obviously. But this one's going to go down as something completely different. And uh, it even destroyed the mayor's house, officials say as well. And it's just, um, it's just something that, that's definitely heartbreaking for all those that are, are there to watch. And for us as well as we share in their, their losses. So there's, there's other stuff happening as well in, at Fuego. Uh, new pyroclastic flow at Fuego. Death toll jumps to 75, but also nearly 200 are still missing. And, and the likelihood of finding them is going to be low, at least a large percentage, because it, it happens so quickly. And we have that new pyroclastic flow descending down the southeastern flank of Guatemala's Fuego volcano. Ash plume rose to approximately 20,000 feet above sea level 
and the death toll has, has reached 75 with 192 people still missing and uh, this isn't over either it's it's still an ongoing event as we see the destruction and 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 what it's done to that area the poor people that live in it very very um, sad and scary and actually you know this is out of strange strange sounds and this is talking about how houses became ovens and villages crematoriums guatemala volcano buries entire villages under meters of boiling ash just you know it's just a scary horrifying thing as people carry off several coffins and uh, one of the uh, one of the subscribers out there, that video we watched of the gentleman flying away and in his his van, uh, they they did make it out. They just stayed in place until the cloud went by, and they did survive, which is some good news. And over in Melbourne, records are breaking there already. And Melbourne has recorded its coldest start to winter since 1982. And so, do you remember we were talking about the record heat and now you have the record cold. So what we have is extremes going both directions. The intensity of the storms increasing. Everything is increasing. And everything is just going to extremes. And of course, extremes make life much more difficult. And so, you know, down in Australia, as, as we in the Northern Hemisphere are heading into um, summer, they're heading into winter, and winter is gonna be harsh. And, and they can see it already with the temperatures. And so, all the changes that we see, they just keep building up. Harris County, and this is Texas, uh, public safety agencies are going to receive boats to handle future flooding, as we've seen in so many locales where you would not expect to see that your main street becomes a river. Well, it's a good idea to have boats because this is happening all along the east side now. The whole eastern section of the country has been getting so much flooding. And of course, this is all about, this picture here is Hurricane Harvey last year, and uh, we shall see what happens this year. Uh, but definitely, definitely a good idea. We have to adjust to these things, and you know, we're going to be seeing tremendous flooding events as a normal situation as we move forward. And we're seeing that all over. We're seeing flooding reaching Washington, D.C. area. The Potomac River swelling to its highest level since 2010. And we saw Maryland, tremendous flooding. We've, we've seen it in, in North Carolina. We've seen it up in British Columbia. We saw it in Montana. Uh, we've seen it in, in Washington State as well as Washington, D.C. And we've seen it over on the eastern side uh, as well, up, up in New York State and across the border in Canada. Uh, the more snowfall we, we have in snowpack and then we have the runoff when everything melts you know there's it, it's all the, just this cycle that adds upon itself and over here near Washington DC the Potomac crested at 12.38 feet Tuesday morning rising to moderate flood stage and cresting above 12 feet for the first time since March 15th 2010 and <clears throat> with all the volcanic activity, which is going to increase, that's, that's a given. The, the volcanic activity we're seeing now is really just the beginning. It's going to increase tremendously, and we're going to see more and more flooding as we see this car getting swept away down the street. <laughs> oh, it's just crazy, you know? Look at the railroad tracks here. Everything is washed out underneath it. This is in the Philippines. Uh, tropical depression is, is forming in the Philippines as well as the ones that we have over uh, around Mexico. And if we're looking at uh, our area, and this is something that is actually very scary. Um, if you've ever been, been in the Miaka 
state forest when it gets very very wet there are gators everywhere and and you just have to be aware of them so this is augusta this is up in georgia breeding season flooding leading to more alligator sightings and and the gators um you know they they get out and they'll just walk right by they'll cross the road right in front of you and and i've seen gators in uh hilton head that actually have gone up and been on people's porches and we're <laughs> One of them was actually leaning up on the screen uh, screen door, looking like it was trying to knock its way in. Um, and Hilton Head, it's just crazy because there, there, there are so many gators all over. It's not uncommon to see them on the bike paths and on the walkways. And you have to be extra, extra alert. And so down here in Florida and in Georgia, South Carolina, you have to be very aware when there's flooding that there could be gators in the water that you're walking by. So flooding may be forcing some out of their usual habitats. And over here it says, with love on their minds. Yes, alligators fall in love too. And they find each other attractive, even though we may not. Alligators around Augusta are becoming more active and more visible in recent weeks and this time of the year is breeding season for alligators and that leads them to move around much more. So you have dominant males trying to establish their home range or their breeding area and you have smaller ones getting pushed out by the larger ones. Then you have females trying to mate as well. So there's lots of movement going on. And you must be aware and alert of, uh, alert of them if you're in an area that has them. And uh, in case you have never heard them before, when it's this season, it's, it's a very odd thing to hear uh, gators making those, those sounds that they make. Large fire ravages Chernobyl exclusion zone. Tons of water poured in by planes. So we have a major wildfire also going on through Chernobyl in the nuclear disaster area. And the authorities have deployed dozens of firefighting trucks as well as aircraft to bombard the radioactive exclusion zone with massive amounts of water. Just a horrible thing. We were talking on the radio show last night about not just Chernobyl, but also Fukushima. And, and the fact that Fukushima, it's, it's still not contained. I mean, it's still an issue. We don't even know where the core is. You know, it's, it's, it's a horrible thing. And, and it's just poisoning the planet. What, NASA, what has NASA found on Mars? Space agency going to make a major announcement on Thursday about life on the red planet. So what are they going to tell us? They probably will tell us some more BS like they usually do. And every time we get our hopes up about some new discovery, you know, they, they come out with something that's so anticlimactic that it's, you know, you don't even yawn. Uh, because, you know, we know there's so much more going on than, than they're going to ever let us know because really they're just a tool, a complete tool that's there to just suppress information instead of bring information to us. They let things out in little dribs and little drabs that are basically irrelevant and, and really most of us believe there's a much bigger story going on as to uh, ETs and, and life besides being on this planet, life is all over the universe. Life is normal. And when we look into, like, say, the Vedas, I mean, the Vedas, the Hindu holy books, they talk about life, humanoid life, being abundant throughout the galaxy, all different forms of it. They knew about it. They, they still have memories about it that they wrote down when the gods, quote-unquote, walked with man and it's not just you know in the, in the hindu holy books as well we have that also in in so many different native american traditions uh native african aboriginal australian these cultures remember when our star brothers and sisters walked on the planet with us and there were friendly ones that were here with us teaching us and guiding us and then, for whatever reason, it seems like that stopped. And then we have this whole different scenario going on of control and of, of fear. So we know, 
we also know, you know, from the Vedas that there were periods of the wars of the gods going on in which the gods openly fought in front of us and we saw them going by in their spaceships and shooting at each other and, and basically having these wars and apparently the planet was left in the control of these darker beings that have done nothing but instill fear in us and try to control us through fear and have given us many different philosophies and ways of thinking.